Hello YouTube, this skit coming to you live, straight out of Real Six Aquatic Kennels. Today, I want to explain to you guys why I think it's important to keep a log book or pedigree book on your fish in an effort to have a successful breeding program. This is the basis. This is to get started so that one day you guys can become master breeders like myself. And so I'm going to explain to you about one of the tools that I use and that I have mastered over the years. It actually took me two decades to master it in order to produce awesome specimens like you see before you, Miss Lexus. Looking beautiful, Pyro Trimax. And another awesome cichlid like Capone. Matter of fact, let's go over and take a look at Capone. Ha <laughs> ha, here's my young Pyro Trimax Capone. Awesome specimen. Male, highly aggressive. Look at him. He just super, super aggressive now. He's getting more and more aggressive each day. Now let's get back to why I'm making this video. <laughs> Skip's guide to keeping real hard cichlids. There's some actual breeding tips. There's some good information about breeding in this book too as well. You guys have to check it out on Amazon when you get a chance. Also, check me out on Facebook at Skip Smith. That's my Facebook name. You can uh, befriend me and check out some of my videos and uh, articles and and things that I have written about cichlids and fish. You can check out some of my quotes, aquatic community quotes as well. You, you know one of my famous quotes, documentation beats conversation all day long. And speaking of documentation beats conversation all day long, right before you here is my pedigree book. This is my fish pedigree book. I have been keeping this type of book or log book for a little over two decades and the reason why is I wanted to keep track of my fish lineage their family tree I wanted to have a good idea of the genetics that was passed down to my fish like Capone right here. Miss Kaya. She's looking good too. I don't have the light on that side, but she is really coloring up today. She's trying to rival Capone here. And so I keep a pedigree fish book. Let's show you guys. Here's my certificate of pedigree. So that I can keep track of my fish. So I write down and log in this book each and every time I successfully breed my cichlids. Whether it's pyros, whether it was dobies in the past, umbies, red tiger motoguinces, midas now, I keep a record of it. And within this pedigree book, I have tons of information. I don't really, I have the camera in my hand so I really can't hold the camera and, and go through the book in detail. But as you can see this is a chart illustrating the family tree or lineage. But before I get in depth into this book, I want to discuss the actual definition of pedigree. Because when I first introduced pedigree to this hobby, and believe you me, I am the first to introduce a fish or cichlid pedigree, a lineage to this hobby. Documented lineage. I'm not the first to lime breed fish because discus were lime breed long before pyros were. Oscars were lime breed before pyros were. 
other cichlids have been lion bred before pyros were. Or any of my, my other cichlids. But here's the difference between me and the rest of those guys. I kept records of it. That's what I do. I keep records. And I kept a video pedigree of my fish as well as a hard copy pedigree of my fish. And that's the key to success. That's the key to becoming a master breeder. And that's why I'm making this video for you guys who aspire to be just that, a master breeder someday. Now, right before you, let me turn this light off because I have a little glare right here. Hopefully you can see the picture. But right before you, here's a picture, a Polaroid picture of my Trimax. Trying to get in the light. This picture was taken back and I believe 95. The date is kind of faded off of because it's an old photo, a Polaroid photo. I have other po uh, Polaroid photos of my fish. And this is the actual Pyro Trimax photo. This was taken in 98, if I'm not mistaken, or 97. Like I said, the dates are faded. This was in the late 90s. Here's some photos from early 2000 and late 90s of pyros. I have videos that I have produced long before there was a set stands YouTube or Facebook. They're on DVDs of my pyros, Midas, Dovis, everything. A good friend of mine, Marco, when he came over to pick up fish one time, he and his brother, I actually showed him some of the videos and he couldn't believe it. He was amazed at the video footage that I have on these fish. I do keep a lot of videos of my fish, not just on YouTube, but I have hard copies. I have copies on flash drives and this as well. So there you have it people. You wanna keep a pedigree log book. Now what's the definition of a pedigree? If you go online and look it up, Wikipedia and, and other uh, dictionary definition websites, you'll probably get this definition. A list of ancestral bloodlines or persons or animals that are descended from one another. You also will get a family tree. That's the most common and most grassroots definition and terminology for pedigree. Now my definition of a pedigree is a genetic relationship because that's what it's all about. For me, I created a genetic relationship with my fish. I have pedigrees within pedigrees. That's why my breeding program is so successful and I have a high yield success rate. That's why I could produce a royal pyro trimex like Capone here. He's a royal pyro trimex. Let's get a close up on him. Miss Lexus is a royal pyro trimex. And what I mean by creating pedigrees within a pedigree, a pedigree is just that, a system, a tool that is used to keep account of an ancestral or lineage or bloodline if you will. No matter if it's fish, organic, or non-organic like movies. Movies have pedigrees. If you have sequels to movies and prequels, that's a pedigree. You go back to the first movie, then you go to the second, the sequel and all that, that's keeping a pedigree line. Now, within my pedigree, I mentioned that, I'll get into details in another video when I discuss this. I have like dominant trait, recessive trait, X-linked recessive trait. Those are some of the pedigrees that are in within my pedigree. Let's check out Miss Pikachu over here. The mother of Capone. 
Got that glare, so I'm gonna turn that light off. Here's Capone's half brother, Anubis. This is Miss Pikachu, his mother. Miss Veyron. And this rock, this slab right here, is the slab that Miss Lexus was born on, as well as Capone was born on. In fact, let's go back in time and take a look at when Miss Lexus was just an egg on a piece of slab like this. That's what you call the video pedigree, people. And then I'll end this video. And that, YouTube and Aquatic Community, is my breeding tip for today. Keep a video pedigree as well as a hard copy pedigree, log book, pedigree book, you can call it whatever you want to. Long as you keep track of your breeding, like I have done for the past 20 years, you can pretty much gauge your success rate and how often you produce a certain genetic trait that you desire or don't desire. You may want to drop it off. Man, I want that trait anymore. Back in the day, when I used to raise Trimax, they were known for not being the hardiest of Ampelopis. When you place them in a tank, a community tank, they always seem to get sick, get all kinds of diseases and infections. But I have bred a lot of that out of my, my pyros. My pyros are much more hardier, much stronger, and tougher. And actually, my pyros can really, really go. So I hope this video was useful and helpful to some of you guys, you potential breeders out there. This skip. I hope you enjoy this. I'm out.